changing our rolling, rambling gears for a little bit here, I'd like to talk about what happened with NixOS and what has happened with so many other free software projects like it. NixOS, I don't know all the details or even most of the details. Uh, a lot of the details I got come through other people, so these are not first-hand accounts. But my general understanding is that the board basically uh, decided that they were not going to tolerate, quote, Nazis anymore, where Nazis means anybody who disagrees with us. And they ousted the founder of the project as a result. This is the problem with board-based governance. So one of the things I hammered really hard for a little while in my video about wanting to create a new operating system was the corporation that that operating system would inevitably have to live under. And I think that nonprofit is not the way to go. Even though nonprofits have distinct tax advantages, at least under United States law, you know, tax deductible charitable donations and all that. Uh, but the problem with nonprofits and with C corporations, you know, there's just several corporate structures that require a board of directors. The problem is that the person who created the entity can be ousted by the board of directors. And even if you put things in there to protect yourself as the founder from being kicked out of the organization, well, that doesn't mean that you'll actually succeed because they'll just go to court and tell a judge some hooey and the judge will be like, oh, well, um, yeah, so we're going to kick you off the board anyway. But, you know, this is this this clause is not uh, does not supersede uh, or whatever. They, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> the point is, there's a way to get rid of you. Because when decisions are made by a board, the people who are on the board run the company. And if the people who are on the board make a decision, that decision is final. You need to be a benevolent dictator for life. You need to be the person for whom all decisions are final, uh, or rather with whom all decisions are final. Nobody, there is nobody who you answer to and everybody ultimately answers to you. Everybody who runs the company, everybody who has anything to do with the company does so at your pleasure and discretion. <coughs> and by the way, there'll probably be a lot of coughing in this video too. I'm still dealing with a dry throat, so whatever. Um, the, the, the problem with anybody being in control in any way is that they can abuse that power. And a lot of times it happens in unexpected ways at very unexpected times. And even a minor disagreement can cause a catastrophic breach in your organization. This is not limited even remotely to NixOS. It is all over the place in free software. You see projects fall all the time to social justice, leftist, woke, whatever you want to call it, lunacy. Because they want to act like they're doing something righteous, but the truth is it's a power grab, and that's all that it is, is a power grab. So I think Mr. Honda back there needs to calm down just a little bit. He's really zooming up my butt. But it's just a power grab so that they can take the organization over and exploit it. And I think I've said this, um, or at least gone over aspects of this in no less than two or three of my previous videos where I've discussed these various free software topics, that you have these people out there who see popular things, um, you know, big, good things, generally good things, as things that they can exploit rather than as things that they can actually be a part of and be beneficial to and so on. They don't see it as a collaborative project. They see it as something that they can take over and piss all over and make their own territory. And that's the problem. And these people are not new. A big fallacy is that this kind of behavior is some sort of new thing that didn't exist a long time ago. Like, oh, a cancel culture is only a recent thing. How many movies do you have to watch before you realize that cancel culture is not a recent thing? The, the basic principles behind it are the stuff that a lot of great movie plot lines are made of. You know? Let's get these headlights out of my eyes. 
Yeah, you know, there's there's a lot of movies where the double cross um, or or you know the the surprise uh, we've all been plotting against you. I mean that's that's the theme in a bunch of classic literature. You know, Julius Caesar, probably the most famous thing. You know, et tu, Brute? You know, Brutus, you stabbed me in the back too. Like the whole Senate plotted against me, and you, my best friend, even you. You're the last one to stick his knife in my back? You know, finish me off with a flourish? Really? I thought you were my best friend and now I'm dead? It, it's a timeless tale. The, the, like, the, the plotting double cross. And it, it's not limited to loony social justice wars. And let's not pretend that it's limited to anybody on the left either. Because another fallacy is that it, it's purely the domain of social justice lunatics. But if you look at nonsense like the crap going on with Daily Wire and Steven Crowder and, you know, any, any of that kind of stuff, um, there's no shortage of right-wing cancellation BS that happens, too. You are not innocent, motherfuckers. Let's not pretend like you are. Let, let's not give you some sort of benefit of the doubt, some sort of, some sort of notion that you're more benevolent just because you don't believe in, um, you know taking over major movie franchises and pooping all over them. Although that does seem to be a uniquely leftist aspect, um, the whole cancellation thing is universal. There are douchebags with nearly every set of beliefs. Some of the biggest evil people are the ones that wear the sheep's clothing and carry a knife under it. Oh, I am just a, a humble, smiley servant, sir. I, am, I come to you in peace and as a friend. Now here, hold this knife for me. So we, we see this cancellation thing. It hammers these software projects all over the place. And it, it, it has been very successful because nerds are giant pussies. Um, nerds tend to be socially awkward or um, socially inept, socially uneducated. Um, they tend to try to avoid conflict, thus making it harder for them to establish and enforce boundaries. And this video, for the few of you watching, I know nobody, it's not likely anybody's watching this that has some sort of important software project, but if you are, the thing that you need to understand is that you must establish and you must enforce boundaries and you must never, ever allow yourself to feel guilty or bad in any way by doing so. If you set a boundary and anybody crosses that boundary, they are automatically the bad person. They are automatically doing the evil. I'm, I'm specifically talking about personal boundaries, but you know what? If a project is your baby and you're in control of the project, and someone tries to get you kicked out of it, or someone tries to force you to enact some kind of BS code of conduct or other rules so that they can then rules lawyer your ass out of your own project, uh, or you have to violate your principles that you've established in order to, uh, you know, you don't want to violate your principles, do you? So give us control of your entire project. You have to establish and enforce boundaries, and you have to be willing to accept the cognitive dissonance that comes with that when they try to manipulate you. <clears throat> so, a classic way that something gets taken over like this, some board gets taken over, some project is overthrown, um, most of the time, almost all of the time, the people in charge concede in some way that opens the door and rips the entire thing down. Most of the time, it is somebody in the project that has control that gives it away. The code of conduct thing is a power grab. It's not about mature adults attempting to lay out ground rules that everybody should already know, then why do you need the ground rules? And that, you know, it's just common sense stuff that a basic fundamental human being with basic fundamental compassion that isn't bad would do. You know, making these rules that we that can be misinterpreted to get rid of you is just something that a basic, fundamentally good human being would do. And you're not a, a bad human being, right? You're not, 
you're not even like you're not so evil that you can't even live up to basic fundamental human being standards right right you're not that evil you have to be willing to do what I did when these salespeople showed up in my shop 13 or 14 years ago and tried to sell me cologne. And I said to them, when they asked the question, like, Dad, do you like to smell good? And I said, no. And you should have just seen the look on their face. I very poorly told this story. If you look for a video on my channel called Storytime, Want to Buy Cologne, I poorly re recalled the tale. But in summary, they tried to pull the sales tactic where they get you to say yes to a bunch of things, a bunch of agreeable things that pretty much anybody's going to say yes to. Nobody wants to smell bad, you know. So say yes, like, uh, hey, uh, you, you, like to, you like to feel clean, you like to smell good. Well, then you need to buy our product. And so I knew that it was a sales tactic. So when they asked, do you want to buy cologne? I said, no. But they didn't ask if I wanted to buy cologne. They asked if I wanted to smell nice or if I liked to smell good. And I said, no. The sales books don't really prepare you for that one because the sales tactic of get them to say yes to a bunch of things so that they'll be more inclined to say yes to your sale, it doesn't work very well when somebody starts right out the gate with no. And nobody's gonna say they want to stink, except I did blew that poor girl's mind. They really didn't know what to do. And, and the, so they fumbled out some other thing and I got rid of them. I just said, no, I'm, no, I, 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 I'm fine with smelling terrible. No, I like, I like smelling bad. And they just like, have a good day. Bye. And that was the end of that. But why did that work? How do you tie me rejecting a cologne purchase back to free software projects? or any project, it doesn't have to be software, it's, it's business, it's all of it. It's anything that you do, because ultimately a business is just a project, it's just a venture. It, it's got a corporate structure on, it's paperwork with the government, you know, there's, there's documentation defining how it is put together. At the end of the day, a business is just a project. So if you look at a project and you go, okay, what's best to make this project come to fruition, Chances are pretty good that writing rules for which you, the person who is putting all the time into creating this, um, can lose everything, lose all of your ability to control and manage this project that you are the one who had the vision, you are the one who knows how to bring it to fruition. Something tells me you're not going to just be like, I'm going to write down somewhere. If this person says um, that I uh, I don't want to be a bad person, right? Then they get control of my entire project. That's almost literally what is happening. But they don't do it quite that on the nose. They call it a code of conduct. They say that, oh, well, this is just basic stuff. It's the same as some person coming to your house, trying to get you to join this new homeowners association, and you don't want to join the homeowners association by default, but they come up and say, well, no, all these other people, we just want, we just want rules under which the, you know, the properties all stay maintained and clean and well-groomed. And, you know, we, we want everything to look nice. We want to make this a nice neighborhood. So we're asking you to sign this contract that lets other people tell you what to do with your property, fine you if you don't do what they tell you to do, and put a lien on your house and force a foreclosure, force you to sell your property if you fail to give them $500 for some unreasonable request that they came up with uh, or unreasonable demand that you have now signed off. You wouldn't sign a contract that said all that, but the problem is it's all cloaked in nice, soft, friendly, you don't want to be a bad person language. You need to be comfortable being bad. And yes, I've already made a video about why I'm comfortable being a bad person, and I've already said all this stuff in that too. But Nick's OS, you know what? The founder was ousted. Well, guess what? If the founder had not put together a setup where there was a board of directors in the first place, then none of this would have happened. The founder made a fatal mistake. I was going to say the founder is an idiot, but that's not really the correct description. The founder clearly is a brilliant person who made a mistake. But I will tell you right now, this mistake 
it was easy to see from a million miles away, especially since, you know, Atheism Plus, you know, Donglegate, Gamergate, all of that, 2012 to 2014, you know, set the groundwork. How long has NixOS been around? I don't know. I don't know, but I'm willing to bet that it's a fairly new distribution, that it hasn't exactly been around for 15 years. And it's been, what, 12? At least 12 years since the Atheism Plus thing and the whole explosion of psychotic um, cancel culture social justice lunatics. You knew this could happen. You knew this would happen. You knew that if you had a board of directors, they could eject you. And yet you gave up that power anyway. Why? So you could start a nonprofit, so you could go beg for money from people and tell them it's tax deductible. Look, dude, I've got a really, really simple thing for you to think about here. I got a, a, a suggestion that maybe you didn't think about it, but 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 guess what? Guess what? Guess what? If if you form a, a sole member S corporation, you can still go beg for money. Oh, you, you won't be able to tell people that they can take the money they give you off of their taxes as a deduction, that thing that most people don't do anyway because they don't have enough. You won't be able to do that, but you can go and beg for money as anything. You can beg for money as an individual, sole proprietor. You can beg for money as a partnership, although in a partnership, somebody else or some bodies else are basically a board of directors with 50% or more power against you. So why did you do that? Never form a partnership. As an S corporation with a single member or an LLC with a single member, whoop de friggin do. Look at that. You, you don't have to be in a board of directors situation. You don't have to cede control. You can choose to take the small financial hit that comes with not being a nonprofit, and I, I'm assuming NixOS has a nonprofit, and that's how there's a board in the first place. But yeah, you could choose not to be a nonprofit and just be like, look, we're a foundation. We're not a nonprofit foundation, but we are a foundation. There's nothing stopping you from starting a for profit foundation. Whereby for profit, it's just a legal thing saying, oh, I don't get tax deductions uh, on, on you know, donations or whatever. You go beg for money. But don't beg for money in a way that cedes all control of the project. Because the problem is that <clears throat> now that the founder has been kicked out because of this poor choice of organization, because of giving other people power to kick him out in the first place, now that founder has no control. That founder is gone. That founder is screwed. Everything that that founder worked for, toast. Just poof, in the blink of an eye. They just said, hey, guess what? We voted. You're fired. See ya. What now? What now? You've given up this project that a lot of people, a, a lot of people in the Linux sphere and the free software sphere were raving about. Now you've lost it. You've lost control of it to psychos who are going to destroy it, are going to milk it for all it's worth, virtue signal with it, scribble it on their resumes as they go other places and destroy your project. Granted, the project may live on, but you know, it's never going to be the same. And even if you got control of it again, it's done, man. The, the news is out there. You know, free software does not, the, the point of free software is that anybody can use it. As soon as you go, well, these people I don't like can't use it. It's no longer free software. You violated a fundamental principle. Even the most heinous people still need to use software. And if you start putting terms that, well, people that I subjectively choose can't use it, well, then nobody can really use it, okay? Nobody. And anybody who would put such terms on paper and make it a requirement to be involved, to have anything to do with this software, uh, anybody who would do that is an evil person because they know they know that they are violating fundamental principles of freedom and they don't care. It, it's not about the software. It's not about the project. It's about exerting power to feel good. It's about taking the name, giving yourself control of it so you can exploit it to the max, milk it till it's a shell, and it's gone. That's where all of this goes. That's how all of this ends. NixOS will not be the last. Even back in the day, there was uh, the 
the Opal Project, Opal Issue 941 on GitHub, Coraline Ada Emke, this uh, troon, basically, uh, who ended up working for GitHub, and they fired her, her him, uh, they fired it because it was intolerable and impossible to actually work with long term. Even GitHub got rid of them. The person who's behind the fact that GitHub pushes codes of conduct in the first place got fired from GitHub because they were such a pain in the butt. Think about that. But Opal Issue 941 is where a lot of that code of conduct crap really originated. It's where the to-do group um, code of conduct, the open code of conduct, it all stems from people who, and I quote one of the original, um, the earlier drafts or the earlier versions of said code of conduct, who uh, prioritize marginalized people's safety over privileged people's comfort and will not respond to allegations of reverse isms and, you know, or, you know, speaking in a tone you don't find congenial. Like, we get to be assholes, but you don't. Okay, okay, that makes perfect sense to me. <clears throat> so, it, it, it's gone on for a long time, and eventually, guess what? Eventually, even though meh, the username of the guy that defended Opal was meh, and it was like, well, what have you done? Uh, if, you, if you don't like something, code. It, if you if you code, great. If you don't, get out. Show me what you're worth. Guess what? In the end, Opal <laughs> adopted a code of conduct. Yeah, I'm sure that's going very well. Although I don't even really know what Opal is. I just know it's a, a project that is well known. But yeah, transphobic maintainer should be removed. Well, screw you too, you weird freak troon. We don't want to hear your bigotry. Um, because by transphobic, they, they didn't, the, there's not actually, first of all, transphobia doesn't exist. There is no such thing as a crippling fear that ruins your ability to perform daily tasks that exists because some people think that they're the opposite sex. It's just not a thing. So I don't like even using the term. But yeah, the, 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 the transphobia in question was some minor infringement, I believe. It's just cancel culture crap. It, it isn't what it, they claimed it was, but I'm getting a little bit distracted in these weeds. Yep, we need to bring it back in. No board of directors, no outside influence. In fact, this extends beyond even your corporate structure. Let's say, <clears throat> let's say I make my operating system and my, my software stack, and I'm doing pretty good, man. I've got, um, I've got a kernel, and it, all the basics are covered within the kernel. I've got uh, a core system library that, you know, just like a C library or whatever, that uh, provides all the most frequently used functions that are required for a program to operate. I've got my basic shell and utilities and that kind of stuff. You know, so I've, got a, I've got a basic operating system. Everything's going great. I want to take it to the next level. I want to write a GUI. I want to write graphics drivers. I need to hire people to do it. That costs money. I need to go beg for money. So here's another way people get screwed with their corporate structure. Oh, you have a that's a that's a nice LLC or S corporation or whatever that you have there. Very nice. Um, it'd be a shame if we were to offer you a million dollars of investment in exchange for 30% of the company. Now, granted, 30% is not enough of a company to have a majority vote and vote you out. But 30% is a vote. How many of these can you take before you're screwed? You still need 51% of the company to be able to have final say. And investors do not like to throw a bunch of money at people and not then have control of what they put the money into. So it makes it even harder to fundraise when you want to get big money from investors, but they want to control a portion of your company. What do you do? Oh, brave entrepreneur trying to make your little OS into big boy OS with big boy browser and, and big boy GUI and big boy file manager and you know all the rest. You, you wanna bring your project into the big boy world and you need a million dollars to do it. You're gonna give up 
30% of your company, 40, 49%, 50%, how much of your company can you give up? And then, once you've given up some of your company, the problem with investors is they want to see a return on investment. So, if you have an investor and they expect a return, how are you going to make that money? Well, the problem with free software is that it's free as in freedom, but it's also free as in beer for the most part. Who's going to buy your OS? It's not Windows. It's not Mac OS. I can't run Premiere on it. I can't run QuickBooks on it. That means you've got to write your own Premiere and QuickBooks. Well, that's a lot more work. We need even more money. So it's a major problem. But at any point in this process, oh, we've spent years working on this. We've got all these programmers that we've, we, that have, we've brought in, but we really need money to build this up. Like, you know, we, we need more money to build this up. We've come so far. How much are you willing to sacrifice? And the problem is, if you can see everything through to completion with 25 million, and that 25 million requires that you give up enough shares of your corporation that you now have less than 50% control, well, now you don't really own your company anymore. Other people do. Now those people can get rid of you. Now you can be outvoted. And that is the problem, this, this creep. You can't let it happen. There's a degree of ideological purity to this. Like, you, you absolutely cannot cede any control to other people. You have to control it. But it's hard to get other people to give you things if you don't either have the money to give them or get the money. You know, you, you have to, if you want to get the money to pay the programmers, you're probably going to have to cough up some of your business or give them, you know, sponsorship placement in your thingy. And it also requires that you make money. How are you going to make money? How do you monetize this OS? See, I don't want to make money with my operating system. I want a system that's free so that everybody can be free of Windows, free of Mac OS, free of all of the debt of Linux too. I want a system that does things right from the start. But I could destroy the whole thing. I could, I could put in place a nuclear bomb in my project that could go off 10 years down the line. And all I have to do is have a board of directors or allow outside investment to take a chunk of the company. You, you get the idea here. And that's the thing too. If the outside investment has a chunk of the company, they have some say in the company. That, you know, now we're dealing with votes. Now we're dealing with bureaucracy. It slows down development. You know, what do you do now? So there are so many disadvantages to seeding control. And there are so many people, like the founder of NixOS, who would definitely, I am sure, if you asked them and you said, hey, so you let go of control here. At th this is the moment that you changed everything and let go of the control and now you have nothing. Would you go back and even though you knew the entire path would be more difficult, maybe even not possible, would you go back and change this one inflection point, not accept that million dollars of investment in exchange for a big chunk of the company, not set up a nonprofit foundation with the goal of raising donations because that's how you were gotten rid of and your entire project was destroyed and everything that you worked for ended up burned to the ground anyway. I'm sure all of them would say, yeah, I absolutely will go back and redo everything that allowed other people to take control because it's only after you've been kicked out the front door and are sitting on the hot pavement on your ass that you suddenly go, hmm, maybe I should reevaluate the way that I thought about this, but it's too late. Now, I'm sure the founder of NixOS will go on to do some other thing, maybe fork it, make a new one, I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing, if the person who did it is smart, then they're not going to do another nonprofit foundation, they're not going to do a C corporation with the board, they're going to maintain control, not take outside investment that insists on taking control of the company. You don't let these people in. If you open a door, however small, you screw yourself, you screw your project, there is no way, no way for it to survive once you've opened the door. Because there are millions of people in the United States alone, a huge chunk of those people are A, idiots, and B, assholes. 
Oh, and C, think they're better than you, and D, have no problem co-opting anything that they can get their grubby hands on to show everyone just how much better than you they really are. And it doesn't even have to be like, they don't even have to hate you. All they have to do is show up and be like, we want this, we are taking this, goodbye, and you're gone. See, I see some fundamental mistakes with the way that things were done. And uh, I just, I, I can't believe it, man. It's just, you could have seen this a mile away, yet they did not see it a mile away. I can see it a mile away, you know? I know the path is harder if you keep things clean, if you keep the doors shut, if you control everything. I know that there are problems. I've heard of founder syndrome. I've heard of this thing that's like, oh, you know, you're not the main character in this story. Well, you know what, motherfucker? I am the main character in this story. I think that the whole founder syndrome thing is bullshit. Because the truth is, the guy who started the whole thing is the one who had the vision, and it should follow that person to the bitter end. The whole founder syndrome thing doesn't sit right with me. Because it's this notion that, well, you start an organization, and that organization has a mission, and that organization should follow that mission, and that's the end of it. No, motherfucker. If I start an organization, and that organization has a mission, I'm the one in charge of that organization. I'm the one who fulfills the mission. And if you don't like it, you can leave. And that's why I think that getting founders getting ousted by boards is stupid. And look at what happens. They dumped Jack Dorsey from Twitter. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg, I think, has no involvement in Facebook to speak of. He's just sort of an, a beta orbiter in his own business. <clears throat> you know, this is all these CEOs or founders, they, they get ousted from their own businesses. And, uh, and then the business has problems. And then it's like, oh no, we have problems. How did we not see this coming? It's almost like the person who started the thing is the person who knows what they're doing and everybody else is just on board to work for them, to work towards what that person wants. You know, and that's the way that it should be. That's the way that business works. The problem with a board is that a board is a bunch of different people coming in and saying they disagree with the founder and going in the wrong direction. And I understand that there are businesses with boards that are highly successful and so on. But the problem is, as you add people to a group, as you add management, as you add, um, if, you, if you have one person, that one person can think pretty clearly on their own. But when you force them to interact with other people, that's when you start having problems because multiple people together introduces power dynamics into the conversation and into the way that decisions are made that are not based in rational thought, logic, or even reality. Emotions can often rule the day. Whoever's willing to be the rudest, the most nasty, the whoever is the most disruptive, basically, the more people you put together to make a decision, the, the more likely it is that the worst comes out of it. And that's one of my major problems with not having the benevolent dictator for life business structure. Because if you have multiple people together, multiple people together are stupid. In fact, I would go so far as to say that as you add people to a group that has to make decisions, that has to analyze something and come to conclusions, as you add more people to that group, what you have is an exponential increase in the dumb. Um, so you have a number, you know, you have it X, right? X is the capability, like, like just sort of a, a level of dumb, right? X level of dumb for one person. If you add another person, now you've got X squared. If you had another person, now you've got X cubed. If the level of dumb is two, now you've got eight because the dynamics between three people are not going to be the same as the dynamics between two are not going to be the same as one person with nobody else to object. Granted, one person can say stupid things, but the thing is, we're talking about people who are on equal footing here. If you have a person who has the final say and other people who just advise them, then that person can use the other people's input to check themselves and make other decisions. And there's still a bit of a problem with that because they could check them in a dumb way that's convincing. But 
the bottom line is if one person has all the power, they can reject the bad choices, the bad arguments, and it really comes down to that person's ability to discern what is and isn't the best, what is and isn't correct. And if you can do that really well, then chances are very high your project succeeds because you made all the right choices. And if you don't, then chances are you won't get very far in the first place, your influence will not be very wide in the first place, because you'll keep falling over your own two feet. Anyway, I'm done talking about this. I, ha I hate this stuff. I hate it because I'm talking about the bad in humanity. I spent most of my youth just, you know, I grew up in the can't we all get along generation. I was born, you know, over a decade after the Vietnam War, all that stuff, whatever. <coughs> Maybe two decades. I don't remember when the Vietnam War was. But I'm young enough that I was born after all the war stuff and all the war protests and Kent State and all that. And I tried for the longest time. I spent my youth just like at least hoping that people were generally fundamentally good and that vision has sort of been shattered because as time progresses, it seems they just get worse and worse. And I don't know what to do about it. I don't want to focus on the negative. But that's the world. That's the whole world right now. The world is a dumpster. The world is a dumpster and we are the rotting banana peels at the bottom. It just sucks. And the reason I want to make an OS and programs that are nice and clean and free of both the garbage code and influence from the old stuff, but also the garbage people that have co-opted all of the old stuff. Microsoft, screwed, you know. Mac OS, do I really have to tell you? Microsoft and Apple and the Linux Foundation are all absolutely infested with rainbow-haired bugs that want to screw everything up that or uh, discount Indian guys that get on the Microsoft support forums and tell you, you know, kindly do a clean boot. And that's the only answer they have for problems. What the hell, Microsoft support? Most useless forum I've ever seen in my life. Anyway, I don't want this. I don't want to live in this world. I want to live in a world where we don't have all this just stuff that basically exists to milk you. Everything milks you. I, I hate it. I hate the fact that if I go out and I buy a nice car for once, if I actually blow all the money that it takes to get a really nice automobile, that it's probably going to be tracking everything I do, sending it back to some auto manufacturer that sells that data to some other asshole. You know, this, this can't go on. This cannot continue. I'm tired of my phone listening to me and then seeing some BS ads on the smart TV that I can't put an ad blocker on because you're not allowed to put apps on your own goddamn Roku. You know, and yeah, I know Roku sucks. I bought them years ago, all right? Roku didn't suck as much back then. They were cheap. They got the thing done that I wanted done. They have Plex, you know, that's it. They have Plex. That's what I did. I bought Roku's to use Plex. Maybe that wasn't the best choice, but it was the easiest, quickest, cheapest choice. So that's what I did. Yeah, I got Roku's in a bag. Anybody want to buy some? I got a few. But yeah, the, these, these Roku's, they don't let you install apps. Um, your phone. Your phone, if you have an iPhone, oh, only recently were you even allowed officially to sideload anything. But even that is jumping through hoops. There are devices that come out with Windows in S mode where you're not allowed to install anything that Microsoft hasn't curated and made sure that they have total control over from their stupid Microsoft store. You know, the, the, the Android is a free system to some extent. You can enable sideloading if you jump through a few minor hoops. You can install F-Droid. <clears throat> but ultimately, Android is a shit system too. The whole open source part of Android is basically rotted on the tree. And there's a lot of stuff in Android that does not work anymore. There's a lot of stuff like, say, your banking. You can't use a banking app if you don't have official Android sources that are locked down with no root access because there's some stupid security thing I keep forgetting the name of in Android that won't let you use your banking app unless you have this, this locked down system. So you can't have control of your own device and check your bank account at the same time. It's disgusting. It's absolutely disgusting. I hate it. I hate it. 
it is not a condition that I'm willing to continue living in. So what I do is I pirate what I can because the pirated versions don't connect back to the manufacturer and send them all your data. You know, I pirate what I can, uh, I crack what I can, you know, I neuter what I can, but I shouldn't have to do this much work just to run a clean system that doesn't try to bend me over and bang me in the butt with no lube every time I wanna check my bank account or watch a video file from my computer. No TV seems to exist anymore that's not a stupid smart TV. You know, what am I supposed to do with that? I want a TV where I can press a button on it and change the channel or the input and, and just that's it. I don't want a smart TV, I just want a screen. And that's basically it. You buy a monitor and hook a computer to it and hopefully you can run something, but even like Linux, you know, oh, you want to watch Netflix on Linux? Oh, uh, well, um, sorry, uh, you need you need access to Widevine DRM, and that's a whole nother mess. You know, you got to have Widevine encrypted murder or you can't watch this service you're paying for. Just because they're worried about piracy, even though the pirates get it anyway. Bunch of pricks. All right, enough. I have I have to stop, or I'm gonna get really pissed. Like, comment, subscribe, whatever. Thanks for listening. Uh, I want your thoughts below. Please post your thoughts below. <laughs> I'm desperate. I'm not really desperate, but I want to hear from you. Take care.